map really does look good, but terrible map. It's ridiculous in front of because like it's always gonna be one-sided. This was a massive gameplay problem with the map that made it less fun to play. Pull out in front of for a reason, and I guess we should make them happy. Freiburg does return, picks off Pronax. He's still here though, and he's going for more. Two big frags. The third man is here, however, and Freiburg has to back off. But Freiburg somehow opens it up. Wants to see if there's another one he can kill. He spots both of them. He gets, whoa, oh my god, the mice. That is insane. Doesn't hit the no scope. Doesn't hit the pistol. Oh, for the yes. Would you believe it? Oh, this is huge. Doji's throwing an aid into the corner just as the bomb's gonna go off. They're both gonna go down. The Bree is like sweating bullets. Happy he's gonna get the quad kill in the ace. What is this? They're trying to build pyramids, but it's no more play. Stewie's oh! running around. We go to overtime. He gets shut down, but Hobbit's gotta fight two more oh! teams. Same angle! Same oh! angle! As Pronax oh fights next. Oh my god! Oh, pressure! It's fair to say that Inferno is the most reputed and refined battleground in competitive Counter-Strike. It isn't the franchise's most iconic locale, that's Dust 2, but it is the most integral and, for better or for worse, indispensable. Guardian waits patiently as Cloud9 sets the push up. Oh! Oh, this happens! They made it work! Cloud9 are your E-League Major Champions! Inferno is the definition of honest, high-intensity, hell-in-a-cell counter-strike. It's chaotic, claustrophobic, and painstakingly strategic. The fact that the sights are hard to take is only offset by the fact that they're even harder to retake. Kenny in a one versus three and Luminosity, they are one round away from match and map point here. Kenny getting a single headshot, he's got the double. Sprays gets one more. There is no goddamn way that he's gonna do this. He's got no health. Cole gonna go for it, he gets the shot! Kenny, what are you doing? You've gotta be Kenny, that's a clutch! Oh my god! Inferno is our fabled franchise's great equalizer. It's also been around forever. You see, this small, rustic settlement dates back to the dawn of Counter-Strike itself. Created by Christopher Narby Otti, the same mapmaker who made Aztec and Vertigo, DE Inferno was first rolled out on March 13th, 2001, as part of CS 1.1. CS 1 version was set in a village, with the bomb sites being areas next to gas pipelines that the terrorists seek to destroy. Layout-wise, it's surprisingly similar to the current Inferno, but visually it's almost unrecognizable. Which is understandable, of course. What separated Inferno from the fray is that, even among Counter-Strike's most primal foundational play places, it stood apart as a sort of instant, competitive classic. Once they get up in a jungle, it's kind of just a massacre. They're able to really easily pick off that triple stack, the player in sight, the player big pit. I'm not sure that the CTs were aware that MTW was so onto what they were doing and how passive they were going to be playing, especially on such a low buy round for them. From the day it launched to the tail end of 1.6, it was never not a vital go-to stomping ground for literally anyone who took this inimitable shooter seriously engendering all manner of slow, strategic, meticulous slugfests. Inferno was just as much about mind games as it was about mowing people down. In 1.6 you can also hack a lot of more, through, shoot through the walls, etc. You can do a lot of different spams, you can use your utility in a different way, like you can throw the nade on the roofs and then you can hear them like getting hurt by the nades, like you can you can clear out way more different positions uh, on the map, on Inferno, especially 1.6. It wasn't until the addition of Inferno into Source in 2005, however, that it really started to resemble the calm, rustic village that we know love and trounce around in today. Very games need to get that defuse if they want to get themselves ahead again. RPK takes on Shocks, comes in, Smiz grabs two of his own. Mullick, RPK again, and again, he takes on Smiz. RPK and Apex versus Mullick. Can they do this? One versus two. Mullick takes on Apex, can he clutch this for uh, Dragons? Comes in, RPK says no, and he rips his head off. Comes in with the defuse. From graveyard to car to that godforsaken boiler room, it was in Source that virtually all of the hallmarks from which Inferno's now vestigial callouts 
came to be. Ever wondered why they're called first and second oranges? It's because they used to be filled with actual citrus. What's funny is that, although Source's DE Inferno is ostensibly situated somewhere in Spain, the real-life inspiration for this revamped village is actually located in California. You see, much of the map was modeled after a city in Orange County known as San Juan Capistrano. But it was also in Source that Inferno's campiness really started to stand out. It was ratty, cramped, filled with hiding spots, and, as such, impinged upon the element of surprise. Rounds on Inferno were either slow and grueling, over in the span of seconds, or both. Coming through apartment place, Shoxy takes down one, two, three as they line up perfectly for him, as they just jumped in trying to take him down as he just completely ripped them apart. That was huge right there. NBK in the meantime took down Smiths over on the uh, right side, but he's coming back around and he's going to be making his way through the apartments. Uh, I don't know where Shox is, but he's going to peek out and Nathan's going to get dropped by Shox. The map's slow, execute heavy playstyle began to take root. More than perhaps any other map in Counter Strike, Inferno pigeonholed you into hitting a site and hitting it hard. The reason, of course, is that Inferno was all about rotates. The sites were easy to hold, difficult to assail, and impossible to reassail. That said, the journey through CT was long, meaning that the goal for T's was either to fake and beta rotate, or take in seconds flat. As they try to push their way up into the A-bomb site, and he just ripped them apart. Uh, Mouseboard still pushing around, trying to keep them at bay. Rattlesnake takes on one. Conan and Angel does answer back on the MX. That's a nice shot there. And uh, Bomb is going to get planted. It is now a, oh, make that a 1v3. It was a 2v3, but Angel Dust gets dropped. It is now Conan versus Mouse Sports. And coming around, Conan gets one on the release, and Pete, he gets that last one on the Husey. That was absolutely awesome. And then in 2012, the world beheld the release of Counter-Strike's true, long-awaited successor, Global Offensive. And with it, an even newer Inferno. All right, so you're now looking at Inferno in the Counter-Strike Global Offensive beta. Obviously looks a lot nicer. Pretty big visual upgrade over past Counter-Strikes. And that is where things really started to heat up. He's behind the sandbags and they come for him. He gets the first kill. Now it's a one on two and the bomb is ticking away. He's, he's kind of zoned out here and that's not good. He has to go back and get a headshot and they're waiting for it. Get right as low. The bomb is being defused. Flusher gets the first kill. He sprays through. They stop defusing and it's a one on one. Flusher's out of bullets. Two left. He goes down. He flaring, but there's no time. Flusher did it. Oh my god. It's going to be 11 to 4. What a round. With CS entering the modern era and even weightier majors on the line, the competition really stiffened. Since Inferno was already integral to high-level play, it quickly evolved into this sort of ultimate decider, a must-have, make-or-break moment in any three-map throwdown. And Snacks will be the man that'll lead this push in, and he'll get a headshot on to get right, and they're four frags away from victory now. It's Freiburg still in there, though. Freiburg's not gone. And he will show himself at the right moment, which is a headshot onto Bialy. He will eventually go down at the hands of Pasha. They're three francs away now, Virtus Pro, as they will move the bomb in. And it'll be Fifth Laren and Exist to come charging in. And Snacks to go mowing them down. One more will do it for Virtus Pro. It's all on Forest. He gets the first. He doesn't get the second. A place where legends were not only born, but kings crowned. Thrown by Nip to try and hold them back. Olafmeister will find the shot on Exist. Freiburg does return, picks off Pronax. He's still here though, and he's going for more. Two big frags. The third man is here, however, and Freiburg has to back off. But Freiburg somehow opens it up single-handedly. All three frags, but the bomb is on the other side. Yeah, but that could be all right. Fnatic are making a huge rotation. Freiburg, all he has to do is stay alive, and it's going to be great. Oh, he picks up a quad kill. He could do even better than staying alive. He gets the kill. Now, is it going to be an ace with five HP? That's what's on the plate right now for Freiburg. JW, on the other hand, has quite a different menu to chew through here. He's got a one on three with an AWP. He's guessed the right bomb site, but the bomb goes down. So now, he not only has to kill three members of NIP, he also has to defuse the bomb. And I'm wondering if it isn't smarter at this point, try and find a way out, but from the depths, Freiburg, dun, 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 like a dun, hungry dun, dun. shark, just 
inching his way forward here. He wants that ace, and that would be absolutely brutal. Fanate, that could really rock them. Freiburg comes in. He sprays. Freiburg misses, and that's the ace. He picks it up single-handedly. Ruins Fanate. From pretty much the second that CSGO started, Inferno began to solidify itself as this essential, inseparable part of what made its rapidly growing competitive scene tick. The one map that everyone not only played, but had a plan for, since, well, you had to. In Inferno, everything can change just in a matter of a second. If you tank this nade too much, you're basically out of the round. If you're not lucky enough to insta-headshot someone, if you go into the A, B execute or A execute, like, but... I don't know, it's something with Inferno that, like you said, like, people love Inferno for a reason, and I guess we should make them happy. Inferno wasn't just a stomping ground, it was a breeding ground. For what, you ask? everything whether it was scandal yeah. he's the one with the m4 he's still fully set up he does catch a glimpse of one he gets the tag he gets the kill oh how the hell did he pull that off strategy five seconds there's the bomb plant attempted could they hear it i think the smoke actually blocked the sound the bomb goes down with two seconds left and that's gonna be it sheer unadulterated hype as pro next oh point. my oh. god Basha! oh my or something in between. Device he should know, he sees Alo as well, he wants to see if there's another one he could kill, he spots both of them, he gets, whoa, oh my god, Device! That is insane, takes down wow. Alo and Freiburg! What a next level play! Inferno was proof that if you took the greatest gunners CSGO had to offer, stuck them into this small cerebral hellscape, and put their tournament lives on the line, anything could happen. Kenny S on site, straight in his face, doesn't hit the nose go, doesn't hit the pistol! Oh, Kenny S, would you believe it? To catch somebody peek on Envy's side, and well, that's what happens when you go around the corner happy with Juan Dig. Oh, and another one! Oh, and a third! Happy! He could get another one here too, Dupree! Dupree is like sweating bullets! Happy, he's gonna get the quad kill in the ace! What is this? The downside to all of this, of course, was that for those who were actually in the match, Inferno was kind of a nightmare. It was tight, offered very little variety or breathing room, and was almost oppressively execution-centric. Everyone was uh, smoking top banana from City Spawn all the time. You were just waiting for smokes, and eventually the game would end up in like 20, 30 seconds, and uh, everyone on A could be sitting on spots you could basically not kill them on. And if you went B, you basically got like three people in your face directly and they're just sitting there just waiting for you to just have no nades left and hope for the best, basically. I'm really wondering about Get Right's position right now. All the way in the back there, is the auto sniper really going to be useful from this position? Sure, if they boost up like he's expecting, but if they get into the bomb sign and they are walking in right now, he's looking for the shot here. You can see a couple of faces. Well, there's the one kill. That's a good start here, but they're challenging him. They're fighting him. They're not scared. Get Right. Oh, he gets all three kills. Looking for one to go. SDH, Get Right, shutting it down. And it's 14 to 7. Unlike most of CSGO's other competitive offerings, Inferno wasn't open, puggy, and fluid. It forced you to adopt and ideally perfect the sort of constricted, cage matchy, all or nothing style of Counter Strike, whether you wanted to or not. They are forcing you to play a style that you don't want to play, and I feel a lot of people don't want to play like that. Like, you have to be forced into playing a different style or a specific style on the map that gonna be make it or break it, basically. Like, there's nothing special with it. But other maps, you can do so much more with it. That's the thing, that's the beauty of CS. Like, other maps can give you more opportunity to do other cool stuff. In an effort to modernize the map a little bit, Valve afforded it with a much needed visual and structural rework about midway through 2016. One that removed and or rectified a lot of its rattiness, securing its future whilst, as Three Clicks Philip shows us, paying tribute to its past. Hidden within this room is a computer screen. It's usually off, but very occasionally it's on and showing the menu of Counter-Strike 1.1, which happened to be when Inferno was first featured within the game. The issue of course is that one couldn't simply undo the suffocating, enclosed and repetitive nature of the map with the wave of a hand. It seemed as if Inferno was fated to remain this frustratingly formulaic set piece a sentiment that War Owl echoed 
shortly after the rework. The difficulty in performing retakes on the map often led to games where, after the terrorists captured a bombsite, the CTs just decided to save, even when they had equal numbers, where on a different map, they would have attempted a retake. Statistically, this happened more often on Inferno than any other map, at both the professional level and the matchmaking level. I don't think anything has been done to mitigate this issue, as the general layout of the map remains almost completely intact. When the new Inferno was released, I thought it was going to skew more terrorist-sided than the previous version, because it was more difficult to do that smoke delay meta that was so common previously. Also, with the wider passageways, I thought it would be easier for terrorists to push positions, uh, they wouldn't get bottlenecked as easily. Uh, that didn't happen. It felt as if no matter what, the vast majorities of rounds played out exactly alike. The T's had little to no freedom in their movements and were obligated to tick the same boxes every round. Take banana control, try for brackets, bait out utility, pick a site, and, well, pray. Every CT does the same thing as well. If they have the best bomb for top mid, they're gonna throw down a molly to destroy them to not get into close to banana or peak mid. At the same time, the B guys are trying to take B control. The terrorists are also throwing up uh, molotovs up in the car, like close to the car, or taking like hard control of banana. And then all of a sudden, the, uh, the A apps guy die because someone lurked against A, or he kills the guy who's lurking second mid. Like, it's, it's nothing special with it. It's nothing like mind blowing with it because we've seen it through like the fucking early stage of Inferno. Same thing there, you know, like, it's sad in that way. And yet, here's the thing about Inferno. In spite of all its faults, all of its annoyances, since time immemorial, it's never ever not delivered. Just changes, could go either way, but um, oh, he's got the ankle right through the smoke. Absolutely beautiful, and that's another bit opening kill here. That is what Fnatic need. That's exactly what Titan did as well. Existence will get the return here on Crimson. Titan right now actually have to be a little bit concerned because the four round difference here is not that great. This is within the realm where Fnatic could definitely make a comeback happen. Oh, certainly, certainly. They are currently walking up onto the site, but I'm glad that they're all grouped up. If they can take this fight, Kaylee does manage to pick up the entry though, and this is going to slow things down for Fnatic. And he's going to get into position from Pit as well, and this is such a difficult position to get him out of. This and they have a second member here at the bomb sign, and there's already a rotation happening. Fnatic are actually in a horrible spot right now. As long as Titans stay cool, they're gonna be fine. Oh. What a sick shot! And oh my god, JW, he gets the second one. He's looking for the ace. He's got just seven bullets, and he's gonna go for it in the corner. Now it's a one on one. He misses that shot. There's 25 seconds left, and he's got six health. And he's gonna go with a CZ. Sprays here. Existence trapped in the corner. Now 20 seconds. What? He gets the ace. Are you kidding? Because when the going gets tough and the stakes are as high as can be, there is no place you as a spectator would rather be. This setup is getting torn apart. Lucas back in again, the third kill on the way through. He gets shut down, but Hobbit's gotta find two more. Oh, Save Angle! No! Save Angle! Oh my god, Hobbit! No plays you'd rather see. Bring more. This is so smart. Oh, this is huge. Doji's throwing a nade into the corner just as the bomb's gonna go off. They're both gonna go down. Because Counter-Strike isn't always about doing what you want, it's about doing what needs to be done. Nothing else is going on, he's got to go back, Stewie's on his own, but look at the time! Look at the time, there's seven seconds of blood bomb! They're trying to build pyramids, but there's no more play! Stewie's oh! won the round, we go to overtime! Tarzan have done it! How have they done that? They came back all the way! It's about feeling the heat and performing in spite of it. And suffice it to say, on Inferno, you always feel the heat. Device who's had a really rough game, flashed, he's gonna get that shot, and that has to feel a little bit going out middle of the air to take down Alex, and now they're pushing, oh! oh are you no gonna be kidding me? He takes every single one! from nothing to the AWPAs. It's the one map in Counter-Strike where there is quite literally no room for error, where oftentimes you need to pull off some unthinkable shit simply because you have no other option. Does Breezy actually get a plant? Oh no, the Kriegs are coming. The Kriegs are coming. Oh Ooh, wait, maybe more. No way. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Where dreams don't just come true, but undone at the drop of a hat. Here with the opener, they're oh. trying to chase Fallen down, but Stewie's got his back. It's the beginning of the end, and it's all the AWPs. Canian, burnout, can't find a thing. Stewie and Fallen making it happen.
happen. Make it Team Liquid be that semi-finalist. Refresh as good as he's been, as much as he's given us. This is a Team Liquid victory teed up. He's on for a third. Now fly dead as well. Refresh, how are you making this happen? Grim, the pit hero, the guy who's dug deep throughout this entire series to save that A-bomb site, has now got to come in clutch at B. Refresh on for the ace in a one-on-five clutch. He's looking to keep his legacy in check. This never should have happened. It should have never been this close. Grim, his heart's racing, his heart's beating, but Refresh can't find him. It's a guessing game. Stick on the bomb. Grim doesn't swing, he thinks it's a fake. Refresh oh! with all five, and we're going to overtime. The unforgiving infernal underworld, where our game's greatest scores are settled, and for better or for worse, always will be. Inferno, the legendary map that's always played in a good best of three was ending up as a, the grand final map of the major. But we weren't really 100% sure that we had the chance to win it one, this one, but Farber made a huge chase. I remember our one on three clutch. Then we won. Step, finally claimed the title! They are the champions! For the second time, Pronex with one Freiburg. Oh my god! He's freezed and he gets both kills! And the grand final continues! Again on the site, let's see some more magic, my friend, with that orb. Chris J goes down. Oh, and Nifty! And Nifty is coming up, absolutely what? insane! Right now for the Renegades! Guardian waits patiently as Cloud9 sets the push up. Oh! Oh, this happens! They made it work! Cloud9 are your Ely Major Champions! Thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, hit the sub button and ring the notification bell. For unique bite-sized videos you won't find anywhere else, hit us up on our Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok.